is your Great Dane jumping up people when it meets them? For one of the largest breeds on the planet, that can have absolutely devastating consequences and is a behavior that must be dealt with as quickly and as efficiently as possible. It can be heartbreaking when new owners of Great Danes go through something like this, but I promise you that is exactly what we're gonna help you with in today's video. Welcome back to the Femrear Great Dane Show. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FemreaCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the incredible Great Dane and then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect Great Dane companions. So if you love Great Danes as much as we do and that sounds like something you've been looking for, I promise you this channel is for you. So start by hitting that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell so that you'll never miss a future video. Now, as a canine behaviorist that specializes in large, powerful breeds, the Great Dane is a breed that I have a lot of experience in helping clients with. Now, Great Danes are fantastic breeds with wonderful temperaments, and it's very rare that I have to deal with any kind of severe levels of aggression from a Great Dane. However, that doesn't mean that I've not seen lots of cases where Great Danes have done a lot of damage to people, but usually that damage is through an accident, them being boisterous, not knowing their own strength and size. And even though it's not meant or comes from an aggressive place we still have a responsibility to ensure that that doesn't happen and jumping up is one of the most common causes of these issues so in this video i'm going to make sure that we give you as much information as possible to get on top of this with your great dane as quickly and as efficiently as possible and to do that we're going to cut over to a professional grade webinar that i've recently filmed all around jumping up helping professionals or high level canine leaders go into depth about some of these common problem behaviors how to put in training programs, behavior modification, behavioral interventions to be able to fix and address these problems as quickly as possible. So we're going to jump over to that webinar now. I'm going to let you go through that whole thing, take as much information and value as that from possible because I really want to help you guys ensure you have as much success as possible and to be able to get to the point of having that dream great day you've always had. So sit back and enjoy. So in this next quick fire webinar, we're going to be addressing one of the most common probably the most common problem behavior that as a canine behaviorist I come across in what I class as the category of more of a, a low level problem behavior and that is jumping up. Now depending on the breed that we're talking about if it's a small dog then it's an annoying obnoxious behavior. If it's a large powerful breed then it can be incredibly dangerous. Either way I truly believe that jumping up should be a non-negotiable is not acceptable behavior and all dogs should be well-mannered calm patient dogs. So in this webinar I'm going to talk about how I help my clients go through the process of being able to get a dog that is jumping up and is either obnoxious all the way through to downright dangerous to having them as calm, relaxed, patient, well-mannered dogs. Now, yes, there is a very clear behavior modification and intervention strategy that we are going to put into place to be able to very quickly, efficiently, and incredibly effectively deal with jumping up. It's probably the behavior with the most high success rate for pretty much anybody to be able to come in and implement this strategy to high levels of success. Now, if you follow Femrear at all and you've watched any of our other videos on YouTube or these webinars, you will know that it, I feel believe it is incredibly important and the vast majority of the work that we do isn't simply putting plasters on behavior problems we consider that the micro issue now as behaviorists we help people address those problems I'm going to help you with that in today's video but we focus on the macro issue and the macro issue behind all behavior problems is a lack of leadership on the owner's part so whether you're coming at this from potentially being interested in being a professional and you want to help your clients with behaviors like jumping up or you're watching this because you are struggling having your dog display some of these behaviors you must always start by readdress restructuring that relationship and addressing the issue of leadership the owner in that dog's life must become a high level canine leader that has the dog that will look up to them for guidance and direction if you can achieve that then you open up a communication pathway between you and your dog when you have that pathway wide open it is incredibly easy to teach them the things that you do want and it is incredibly easy to teach them the things that you don't want them to do and in this circumstance that is what we need to be able to so quickly and efficiently address the behavior of jumping up 
Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to interrupt and let you know about our boot camp program if you've never heard of it before. It's the program that as a canine behaviorist, I use every single day with all of the clients and all of the bad behavior cases that I work with to high levels of success. It is focused on teaching you how to become a high level canine leader that is able to restructure the relationship with your dog so that they see you as that leader and they know to look up to you for guidance and direction. When we achieve that, we can then finally address those bad behavior problems and get to the point of having the perfect canine companion that you've always dreamed of. So if you want more information about our bootcamp program, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to the video you were just watching. So here at Fenrir, to help people go through that process of restructuring that relationship, putting in rules, boundaries and expectations for their dog, to be able to have them see the owner as the leader in the scenario as we go through our one month boot camp program that we designed. I've completely lost track of the amount of people that that has helped to achieve this to incredibly high levels of success. We have a version of it that we do in person with clients and we also turned it into an online version so that anybody all around the world can do exactly the same thing and achieve exactly the same levels of extreme success and there'll be a link down in the description box below if you're interested by the way but that is about implementing rules boundaries and structure and expectation for the dog that allows them to flip that mentality to see the owner as the leader simultaneously it's about teaching the owner the theories concepts and principles to become a higher level canine leader themselves the combination of the two things gives us the desired outcome of a dog that sees them as an owner opens up that communication pathway and through that pathway then allows us to address these behavior difficulties and problems incredibly easily easily compared to simply facing going and attacking the micro problem and trying to put a plaster on it we address the macro problem and nine times out of ten the micro problem goes away on its own anyway and if it doesn't then we can come in and implement an incredibly easy strategy to address the problem and that's what we're going to talk about now in terms of a dog that's jumping up a lot so once we've restructured that relationship, it is then really easy to address a dog that's jumping up to the levels of like 100% success rate. It is a very straightforward process to be able to stop it happening. We need to correct the dog's negative behavior, which is jumping up. We then need to redirect them and show them what it is that we do want from them instead. And when they're displaying that desired behavior, we reinforce it. So if right now you've got a dog that jumps up all of the time, that's the undesirable behavior up here. And the desirable behavior is right down at rock bottom in terms of being calm waiting patiently with good manners we're going to correct this behavior which makes that happen less frequently and we're going to positively reinforce this desired outcome which will mean that that will happen more frequently we do the same both things at the same time and very quickly we get to a point where we're at the desired outcome all of the time and we don't need to use corrections anymore so in terms of what we do is we set up drills and we practice. When we get a friend or family or you as the trainer, if you're doing this in a professional setting, you can go through the door, the dog wants to come and welcome you. I recommend utilizing a slip lead on the dog. The second that that dog wants to jump up or is about to jump up, we can't do it before, because that's not fair. We need to do it with perfect timing to let them know exactly what it is that we're correcting and that we don't want them to do. We're gonna use that slip lead with a very firm, vocal inflection shoulders back chest up and we're going to use a verbal correction whilst pulling them down and we're not tug of war in them down it's just a quick pop alongside the verbal correction to let them know that is not acceptable stop doing that we never ignore problem behaviors good leaders don't ignore problems good leaders address problems head on fairly but efficiently and swiftly and then they move on straight away that's what we need to do with our dogs so the behavior happens the negative behavior i like to use an at, at but you can use a no a tss noise some people even like to put uh, pennies in a can uh, rings that you can jingle some kind of verbal auditory response to let the dog know stop doing what you're doing again i like to use an at, at so i'll use that as an example now so the dog's about to jump up i've got my lead and it's an at, at chest up vocal inflection ah no any version that you want to use let them know that right now bam that's not acceptable we don't do that anymore stop it and then we move on it's that quick a correction is on and off it is over as quick as it starts we don't sulk with our dogs we don't get into a tug of war we don't fight with them we just let them know swiftly fairly and quickly that is not acceptable 
brilliant then it's not fair on the dog to then not let them know what it is that we do want from them instead so when it comes to jumping up the best and most efficient way is the correct the, the undesirable behavior of jumping up we redirect to sit and stay we ask for a stay and then we reinforce that behavior so that stay could be one second so that process altogether might look as something as simple as dog goes to jump up ah, sit good boy yes good and then we stroke and we reinforce and we reward that behavior very straightforward very simple next time we drill it we might go for a two second stay before we reinforce then three seconds then five seconds and ten seconds and we build up that concept in the dog's mind of not only what i don't want you to do but what i want from you in all six situations and scenarios is to sit be patient calm and quiet if you do that for me then excellent things are going to happen Going through that boot camp process, we teach tons of different drills and ways that you can do that as well. In terms of at feeding time, we get our dogs to go into a nice sit, stay and calm before they get access to food, before they get access to toys, before they get access to welcome them up onto the furniture. We drill into the dog this concept of if you want something nice, I want to give it you. I love you more than you will ever know. And I want you to have a wonderful, happy life. And I want you to have everything you ever want. But... To get those things, all I ask, because I am in charge, I am the leader in this situation, is that you sit and you wait calmly, patiently, with good manners. If you do that for me, you can have anything that you have ever dreamed of. If you're obnoxious, you're annoying, you're barking, you jump up, then I'm going to tell you for that. I'm going to swiftly correct swiftly and fairly efficiently with 100 percent consistency so there's no confusion every single time i'm going to tell you that is not acceptable this is what i want you to do when you do that thing for me then good things are going to happen it isn't rocket science which is why you can have such high levels of success at kind of any level of leadership anybody can understand those concepts and theories implementing it is where it gets difficult because you can't be lazy you have to be disciplined you have to put in those rules boundaries and expectations and you have have to stick to them 100% of the time if you do that you will have a perfect dog if you can help your clients do that they will have a perfect dog theory isn't rocket science implementation of it takes a little bit of discipline but if you're willing to put in that discipline I guarantee you're gonna have incredibly high levels of success right guys i hope you enjoyed that webinar i know it might have been a bit fast paced and quite high end level professional stuff and terminology but i promise you if you need to go back and watch it as many times as you want if you implement those programs if you implement those processes you will get there and you can address this issue everything we do here is about keeping dogs out of shelters stopping them from being euthanized and making sure that they get to live happy healthy enjoyable lives we want to help you and i do believe that that is the best way of addressing a very common problem but one that with Great Danes can be uh, that can be absolutely point blank dangerous so we need to get on top of it as quickly as possible so I hope that was helpful in doing that if it was I really appreciate if you hit that like button it helps us out here at Fenrir and I really appreciate it subscribe notification bell that's how you make sure you'll never miss a future Great Dane video because I can't wait to see you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Great Dane show